All right, so before we start, I will be saying I took this loop and I deconstructed it. And that is a, it's a pro tip. Take a loop, deconstruct it, learn how it works, profit. So it looks complicated, but if you look at the shaker, for example, that's ugly, hold on. It's basically a straight shooter. So we'll take this, put this here. If you were to do this, it would appear to be a regular, you know, eighth note groove. But when you take out those notes on the one, it's okay because the kick hits. And you don't need to hear this, you just hear the in-between parts. So it's really like side chaining. Um, yeah, you're just getting rid of some of the dead space, you're just letting no two elements really hit at the same time. Um, yeah, you're really just, you're clearing it up. It adds some bounce to it when when the, uh, the rhythm, the thing that keeps time, like the hi-hat shaker, when that disappears and ducks down for the kick and snare, it adds some. Uh, it adds some good rhythm. It adds some bounce to a track, always. And then you've got this guy. So occasionally, like this kick hits, and the the shaker's gone, right? But sometimes the kick doesn't hit there. But to still give it that like bouncing style of the same bounce, like. No one bounce, no one bounce, no one bounce. You put this shaker there. So it kind of catches on this shaker, it almost feels like. And to help simulate that, you need to make sure these are at different volumes. Volume plays a big part. You hear that? that it just sounds nice. So then we'll go to the shaker. It's a... Uh, to make it sound more realistic with one single sample, this is why I use audio. You hear that? It's not this There's a difference versus this big difference the first one is going to be cut off a lot it's not going to have a long decay and it gives it that like type type of sound where it feels like it's flicking into the next one second one is a little more open third one more open and it gives this effect as if it's like I don't know, it just creates movement. So you can play around with the exact style, but for the most part when working with hi-hat, shakers, any type of percussion, you want to either change the volume, which I did, or you want to change the volume over time, which is using fades. Play around with that, because you never want it to just be one shaker, copy, 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 you know? Unless it's the effect you're going for, it just sounds corny, it sounds inorganic. And with these styles of music, you want to simulate organic things. And it's I find it very fun to do this kind of thing. Then you have this guy. This is just a constant. And it adds to the rhythmic bed. I think drums are overcomplicated. Uh, it's really just, just a series of loops. It's just, this is one loop. This is one loop, um, this is one loop, and this is one loop, but it changes, so technically that's a big loop, and this is one loop, you know. Uh, so there's no point in overcomplicating it. You know, this guy sounds like this. It's really just... It just adds this movement to it. It's kind of something to do in dubstep. It's like the chance. It sounds pretty cool. But having it here gives it a more relaxed feeling. And it may sound simple, but what did I do? Vocoder. It's really, it's that, it's a vocal. And then I put this effect on it which is really just a vocoder with some other stuff and then another vocoder to give it that watery airy feel 
And I mean, personally, I would probably put a utility on and go. You can play to taste, but the point is to like draw them all together, right? And then the snare, very simple. You don't want to, uh, well, with this beat, with this exact style, minimal is everything. It's like you have this constant, which would be this. Without that, just. And then you deviate from it very slightly and very sparsely. And it just adds so much energy, just three separate events creating so much energy. And let's see, the snare, this is why I use audio. The snare faded it, turned it down. And it's so easy to do in audio, because like in MIDI, you would have to like automate the release or like the decay to essentially make it go like that. It's not worth the time. If you like playing it in, play it in and then you know, right click, freeze track, and then right click, flatten track, which will appear there. And then it'll bounce it down to an audio file. So you see how this section plays together? It's like nothing's hitting at the same time. Like one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. And these four elements all kind of bounce in between each other. Like, but da da da. Goes. And that is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Even if we take away the shakers. Although having them there keeps the groove going, but this this bounce right here is incredible. It's like a little fill. If you look at it as a deviation from the shaking, like shaking is straight. It's like, cause even if you take that one away, it's still there. So it's like, it kind of flexes right here. These three flex and then it lands back on track and keeps going, you know? You hear that? It's, it's amazing. So, yeah. I'm not gonna touch into too, too much regarding this. Uh, comment below if you want me to make a more, I'll build one from scratch and show you the process and how you can have something that ends up like this. Um, as for processing, they're all in a group. And I put I like to put my tops, which is vocals or not vocals, in this case yes. But I like to put my tops, which is hi hats and such, in one group, and then kick and snare in another one. Snare one and two. Uh, none of them are processed individually except the vocal. The tops are in this little group with some light compression, saturation to just like if you saturate things in a group, it molds them all together because it accentuates certain frequencies at the same time across the whole group so they kind of like it's kind of like blurring the lines between them because you're you're blurring this one area and they all get the same characteristic in that area and then if you go to drums overall I've put another saturator on the drums slightly different one and then another small compressor here's without Besides gain, there is a noticeable, noticeable difference in texture, besides just volume. Like, you hear that? It sounds kind of fucking nasty, dude. Like, it sounds bad. I don't know. I don't know what I did this time. But this, but this, this drum chain right here works. And you can copy these settings, but it won't always work for the samples you're using in the drum. So you're using in the track five you're going for, but for this one it worked for that aggressive, hot, hip-hop, lo-fi beat vibe. And it just fucking worked. Cause that shit sounded gross before. Sure, the mix is kind of off, but that just sealed the deal. Just fucking limit that shit. Like wherever this is going, it's gonna be a lot, but I don't wanna touch on that. Anyways, let me know what you want to see more of down below. Had a good time making this video. I hope you can learn something. And shout out Medicine and Life City for the original beat that I made this from.
They are dope artists. Check them out. Big in